So in this video, I'm going to discuss with you the best cover crops for spring, especially on clay soil, as well as cover crops that can be used to feed your small livestock. So we're talking about getting better soil and not paying for animal feed. You can't beat that folks. Hello everybody, welcome back to Sarkey Farmstead. So let me tell you something, size matters. But more importantly than the size of the farm or the garden that you're working with, it's the quality of your soil. So what I'm working with here is a quarter acre no-till market garden that I have intensively seeded and grown three years now. Now I'm located in zone 9A, 9B, Southeast Louisiana folks. And my grow season, well, it's pretty much 12 months a year. There's only about a month and a half that pretty much nothing wants to grow. Other than that, I can seed and grow forage for my small livestock as well as food for my family and community. But after three years of battling this clay soil, the heat, the humidity, and the very physically intensive act of covering my ground with either hay and or leaves, on a quarter acre market garden, I decided to work smarter, not harder. And if you didn't hear, my content is harmful. YouTube dropped us out of the monetization program. So if you'd like to support what we do here, we're a debt-free two acre farmstead. We do it different than everybody else, folks. And if you wanna see that, if you wanna learn that, please support what we do here. It's linked in the top of comments. God bless you. Let me you. tell you what we're gonna do here at Starkey Farmstead that's going to be a game changer for my husband and I. First off, I am only going to be growing a very small garden here for our family and community members. Now, outside of the small area with tomato squash, okra, I will have about 10 rows of organic heirloom, what they call dent corn. That corn can be turned into grits, cornmeal and or feed for my rabbits and my chickens. But here's what I'm super excited about. The rest of this quarter acre that you see behind me that's so beautiful and green right now, because last year's cover crops are starting to come up, I'm going to be spreading alfalfa intensively. Now here's the thing about alfalfa that a lot of people don't think about. It has more protein per acre than any other cover crop you can grow. It will grow successively for about six to eight years and then it will completely die out. So it will never take over your garden if you don't want it to. It will not reseed itself, okay? The next thing that I liked about alfalfa and why I chose it can be planted in the spring and or the fall. I mean like, it's a great cover crop for people who don't know a lot about cover crops, okay? It's going to sequester car, I mean, um, nitrogen in the soil, and it's also called a green manure. So once it gets up to about two foot, you cut it every 35 days, and you lay that back in place, and therefore I don't have to physically come out here and lay hay, straw, or leaves to cover my soil. The alfalfa will do it itself. But I'm also mixing in an, um, an oats, a hairy vetch, and a winter pea mixed into that, a spring mix. Both of those are organic seeds. They were both gotten from Johnny's seeds. Now I will heavily, heavily <laughs> go ahead and seed all of that and let it start growing and then cut it down. They will die back in place acting like a hay that I didn't have to put out there myself and continue to do that until I'm ready to plant the rest of the garden for fall. Now, here's the thing most people don't understand. You need to not only rotate what you're growing from space to space to outsmart the pest, but you need to let your soil rest. Now, the Bible suggests plant six years, rest on the seventh. Well, I planted three and I'm gonna rest on the fourth to make my soil a little bit healthier. The thing is I've got very impacted clay soil. Now we've done no-till, you can go back and look at our no-till playlist for the past three years. And the soil difference is astronomical folks. I mean, there's so much bacteria 
and fungi in that soil now, it is soft to about nine to 12 inches. And then we hit like a plate of hard clay again, right? So what I'm trying to do by using the alfalfa is I'm hoping that those deep tap roots will go on and break through that next layer and be a game changer for next year's or this fall's crops, if you understand what I'm saying. Hay is very expensive right now with the droughts hitting the Midwest, okay? That's just the truth of it. So what I'm trying to do is save money, save labor, but increase my soil health, my soil's ability to absorb and hold on to water. Um, I'm also looking to enrich the soil. And there's nothing I could come up with that's better than this. Alfalfa has a 24 to one carbon to nitrogen ratio. The importance of that is that as it breaks down, it's available sugar for the microorganisms in the soil to eat. As you get into gardening, growing, soil health, the one thing that you learn is your plants need nutrients to grow. You don't need commercial fertilizers. Just a little bit of that goes to your plant and the rest of it runs right off into your ponds, then to your streams, into your rivers and out to the Gulf of America, poisoning our seafood industry. So if you have inherited soil and you were unsure what was put on that soil prior to you using it to grow food, or you know for a fact the people prior to you used a lot of asides, herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, and basically they poisoned the soil, you also want to use alfalfa because something a lot of people never think about and why I personally do not use grow houses is because commercial fertilizers leave behind something that soil scientists call salt. It's not true salt. What it is is leftover chemicals that are at such a high level. It's basically like salt in the soil because products, I mean, plants just have a real issue growing in that it's poison and that runs off into water. So what alfalfa does is purifies that soil, removing those commercialized leftover components called salts, therefore cleaning the soil through bioremediation. And you're going to want to start looking for our book, Growing Under a Poison Sky. It should be out sometime mid-April. It'll be amazing, but just keep a lookout for that book. Now, here's the game changer for us. What Sam's going to do is bring her electric fence out and I'm going to rotate my chickens through my cover crops on the areas I haven't planted in this quarter acre market garden, allowing them to free range, to eat their fill, not call, I'm gonna totally take them off of pellets and all that other nonsense. I'm gonna go back to allowing them to eat only what they can find in the garden. They're going to reduce my pest. It's not gonna cost me any money for my eggs. My eggs will be totally free. They'll be more nutritional, higher in all the nutrients that my body needs every day, right? And if you haven't heard, eating a couple of eggs, yard eggs in the mornings, first things can help purify your body if you got the jab from the nasty you know. And that's all I can say, otherwise I'll take my video down. But what I'm trying to tell you is, you can heal your body while you heal your soil. You can feed your livestock while you grow your garden. And you can do all of this, my friends, with never purchasing any toxic chemical products for your garden. I don't buy anything. People are like, well then how do you grow food? I use rabbit manure, chicken manure, and compost made in a chicken rabbit hutch kind of thing I've got going on. You can find videos on my channel for that too. It'll explain how to build it. It's called a rackin pen. Now, my chickens make my compost. My worms make my worm castings. I use rabbit urine during the year and boiled garlic as a pest deterrent. But hear me now, friends. Healthy plants don't get attacked by pest. And if you have healthy soil, you're going to grow healthy plants. And if you grow healthy plants, you're going to produce healthy food. And you are what you eat. So like, comment, subscribe, 
giving you a little update on what we're going to be doing here at Starkey Farmstead on getting our food in the ground. This is 2025, folks. If you aren't growing something, I don't know what to tell you, friend. Things in the world are always changing. You want real security? You want to go to bed at night and not be stressed out about things? Then start growing your own food. You're going to feel better. Your pocketbook's going to look better. Your physical body is going to look better. And you're going to take control. That's how you stay out of the, the range of fear. Fear is when you don't know what to do, so you do nothing and you just become more fearful. People who are unafraid because they have food. When you have food, you're controlling what happens to you and your family regardless of anything else. You aren't going to starve, right? So get you some chickens, get you some rabbits and grow you a garden. It is just that simple.